Uh, Michael uh, comes, hails from Allegheny, New York, and he has uh, studied printmaking at RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, and also attended Rhode Island School of Design, RISD, and RIT. And there's kind of a thing going on there in painting. And he's also uh, a Copley Master, which is a designation from the Copley Society in Boston. And his works have been shown all over the US, intensively in Boston, New York, San Francisco. And his resume is very long, so if you want to find out everywhere he's shown, you're going to have to ask him, because um, <laughs> you won't want to listen to me list them off. So um, he continues to teach. Oh, yes, I, I had the question. Was that a misquote in the paper today? I actually he continues to te teach workshops, mostly in Boston. Well, I think that's yeah, workshops. workshops. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, let's hear Michael talk about his work then. Okay. I'm a luminous painter, and I like to paint what I see and what makes me feel good, and that's being outdoors and uh, being in the landscape. And I think a lot of people like to, like to do that, so I'm, I'm glad that that's what I decided to paint. I paint other things, but I think I enjoy the painting the landscapes the most because I like to be out in nature because it feels good. I feel like that's how I reset. Uh, and the reason that I did the show on some of these series here was because I'm re recovering from a serious bout uh, throat cancer. Because I'm doing well, I'm all clear, but it changed me. It changed my, my outlook, it changed my reason, changed my my whole uh, my whole outlook on what it meant to me to be a person and an artist and a father and a husband. I I didn't know what was the future was going to be for the longest time. It's hard to go through life like that. Uh, I wasn't scared. Except for my, afraid for my children, but I, I just was uncertain, and I think that changed the way I paint. So there's a few in this series here where you can see the lights, not as vibrant, it's not ominous. It's beautiful, but it's not. I don't think it's as finished as I used to do. And my brush strokes are a lot more meaningful and a lot more immediate uh, than I used to play. Like, Sometimes I'd paint the life out of a painting, just paint every brush stroke out until it was perfect and it was like sort of sterile. But now they're just full of lots of life and scratching and digging and painting and it just comes out of me. And I think that's part of, that's in, in, uh, due to in, in part by the fact that I, time is, kept as fugitive. Time is never gonna wait for me. So I don't hesitate anymore. I just get it in there and I just do it. Uh, I, I'm always thinking about my next painting, but I'm always inspired by what's around me. Everything looks beautiful to me now. Everything does, every place I look. So it's, so I, I'll never run out of something to paint and I'll never run out of inspiration. And the only thing I don't know I will have enough of is time. So I just get it done. So there's a series out there that's nebulosity. It just means uncertain, unfinished, un you know. It just means it's everything's very tenuous. So I just did a series, and I actually built the frame, did everything else. But I wanted the whole thing to be just created from right from the beginning, right from what I do. I'm a screen printer by trade. I screen printed the frames. I painted into them. I, they, they were being built at the same time that the paintings were. So it was a whole project to me that meant that I'm gonna create these out of like thin air, out of rough lumber and what I had around and until it just completed this entire series of paintings. And you can see each painting has this light that you don't The light's never directly there. It's always lights around the corner. The horizon's not right there. Everything's not fully formed, but it's like this mysterious light. Like it, everything's just uncertain and un, Uh, there's no resolution to it. It just seems like it's always in transition, and that was 
point of my painting. And that's the point of almost every painting I do now. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want to overwork it. I just want to paint it. You know, I want it to come out of me. And I don't want it to, I don't want to brush the life out of it. I always wanted to have a lot more life in my painting. So I, I use these techniques now where I paint on paper, the absorbent paper that uh, just came out recently. It's just oil paper. But it just absorbs the paint. So they have to put more on, put more on, and it keeps absorbing it. So I have to throw more on. It's forcing me to paint more immediately. And I also paint on copper, which is the same thing. I put it on there, it's just kind of slippery. It doesn't want to stick to it. So I got to put more on, more on, and more on until it just has a lot on there. So each brush stroke shows up. There's more life in the paint. There's more expression. So it makes me think, it makes me work, it makes me constantly battle the substrate, which seems strange. You don't really want to have to fight it, but I, I like it. I like the fact that I feel alive. I feel like I have purpose and there's a meaning for me to throw that paint out there. So all my recent paintings, you can see, that if you look at the dates, they have just more, more paint and life and brush strokes and expression. And to me, it's because I'm just going to get it done. I don't know when I'm going to I don't know what, how long I'm going to be here or what I'm going to leave, what will be left after I'm gone. But that's my, that's my reason to paint now. And uh, it's, just, it's just something that's so much more passionate for me now than, than it was. I almost took it for granted. And I was almost on automatic pilot. Almost enlightening to have to go through this. You know, the gauntlet of the medical industry, the uncertainty, the, it's never a good outcome for some people. But I, I was lucky and I'm grateful, but I'm never going to waste a moment from this point on. I'll take questions and reaction questions. Are most of your locations in the Allegheny, Erie town, or Erie, Lake Erie area? Most of them, except for some of the obvious ones that are the, the, the seascapes, the right. or Lake Erie or Lake Ontario. But it's, okay. Uh, some of them are uh, around Boston, Cohasset, North Shore, the South Shore, okay. some of those, and some in Maine. And this one is uh, Storm King on the Hudson. But it's all, uh, Sometimes I like to follow the footsteps of some of my favorite painters, uh, Hudson River School or some of the uh, some of the tonalist painters. I'll always try to, but I usually try to find local things. But tonalist painters, I'll go out and find a place that's right right around their house or out my backyard. It looks a lot like some of the, some of the great tonalist painters. I'll look at that and I'll paint something that's like hybrid between some of the, some of their favorite work and something that I see in my own backyard. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I think it's beautiful around here. I'm constantly craning my neck. I keep telling my wife that I need a granny clamp it. Both have the top of the car and I'm rocking chair and give me a camera and I'll just sit there and drive me down the road. Yeah, yeah, but see, it's not the least way he's the one with his arm out with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> if he's driving, you want to be very careful. I dropped the camera out the window, too. <laughs> yes. Like, is it, is it uh, the process first uh, a pencil sketch on rough paper and then then it transfers to ink or to the oil? It, it depends. Sometimes the, on the copper, you really can't really sketch on it. So I just start throwing the paint, paint right on there. Behind you, they're like, how long did that paint? Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say because mm -hmm. I paint in the morning or at night. This is not my day job. I have a screen printing company. I own my brothers. We've been doing it for 30 years. So uh, sometimes it happens quickly, and I, I use fascia grind paints. I use Elkins, and I use uh, uh, sometimes on the on the uh, the canvas paintings. I'll start off with this interactive acrylic. It's a company that's this guy invented it. He's an artist. He actually owns one of my paintings. He lives way out in the outback in Australia, but he invented this paint that dries quickly, but you can still rework it. In the acrylic you can rework. So it's like oil, but I can force it. It's a very obedient paint. I can force it to dry with a hair dryer. So I can literally, within a few hours, have a whole painting blocked in. You know, sometimes you take bigger brushes, but, but I can actually paint. This probably took me about two weeks. 
any time, maybe two hours in the morning, two or three hours at night. Sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes I'll just paint plain air. It'll happen right there. And then I'll come back to the studio and finish it. It'll take me a few hours to finish it. But it's, uh, it's much more immediate now than it used to be. I used to agonize for years. I actually stopped painting for 12 years. I quit because it drove me crazy. Uh, I, would spend, I used to tell my people in my workshop, 10 minutes of uninspired painting can ruin 10 months of hard work. Because the oil would never dry, and I'd go in there. I'd mess with it, say, oh, and I have to scrape it back. And I see a lot of people that are frustrated in my workshop who are doing that, constantly scraping things back. Well, I paint these, I paint indirectly now, dry layer over, a wet layer of paint over dry layer of paint. And it, because it's a synthetic elkin formula, it dries like overnight, usually. And then if that's the case, I can keep going without destroying it. If I can, in one of my workshops, I used to, like three days, I'd do this beautiful painting, the big, beautiful, pristine sky and all that stuff, and then at the very end, I'd put this big, bright red smiley face in the middle of it, and they'd be like, oh! And they'd be all shocked that I could wipe it all back and not touch what was underneath it because I, because I, dry, I work in these dry layers. And it's just, you know, it's a, a safe method of painting. And that helped, that helped me think, okay, good, now I can just keep painting and keep experimenting, and I won't ruin all that hard work. So it's, that really liberated me to, to, to actually paint freely, you know, unfettered. Did you say Elkin? Elkin, A. Eh? It's actually actually some of the paints I some of the tubes I've had are from 35 years ago when I was at Rizzi. Mm -hmm. So they're actually been around for quite a while. But it's Elkin. It's actually it's a synthetic. Elkin. Yeah, Elkin. Oh, A L K Y B. I I know it when I when I when I hit it when I finally see it where it looks like it's this endless blue sky or this vibrant light that just seems like it's coming from out so in the canvas. So it takes a lot of layers into that sometimes, but sometimes it's just the right mixture of colors. But it's uh, something I've always done. I'm always craning my neck. My wife's from Kansas, and there's lots of sky in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> just this much land, everything else is sky. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I do want to thank the crew. I want to thank Tom, one of my favorite painters. I want to thank all three artists for gracing us with their artwork tonight. It's really wonderful to have your show here, each of you. And uh, come back. It's uh, here for three more weeks and uh, enjoy the rest of tonight. If you have any more questions, the artists are available and around, obviously. <coughs>